Having trouble getting into position for the overhead? Scared of losing your balance? Then you're gonna to wanna to watch this video. Hey there, Ramon Osu with you here. We're back on the overhead today, and specifically, today I wanna to give you the safest, fastest, and most efficient way to get in great position. What footwork to use so you can hit that overhead for a winner, high five your teammate, and get excited for the next point. So let's get started. You know, after last week's step-by-step -step tutorial on how to master the overhead, I got a great message from a guy named Stuart, and <laughs> it sounded like I was in puberty there again for a second, named Stuart. And Stuart said, due to advancing age, I have trouble moving back for the overhead because I'm afraid of falling. Any safe tips on how I should move back? And first of all, I want you to know if you're having this fear, this is a very legitimate fear. And I've heard of horror stories where people were moving back to hit an overhead and they tripped and fell and they ended up getting some really serious injuries. And what sucks about this is it's totally avoidable, especially if you follow what I'm gonna show you in this video. So my goal in this video is to give you a very simple, safe and efficient way to move for the overhead so you can get into great position and whack it for a winner. And as we get started, I want you to know that every shot in tennis kind of takes on a life of its own, right? I mean, there's no two shots that are same, They're like snowflakes. Okay, but I'm gonna assume for the purposes of this video that you're getting a lob that is gettable, okay? It's a lob that, you know, with a couple of steps backward, you could be in great position to hit this thing. We're not talking about those high moonshot lobs that go up in 40 feet into the air. That we're gonna have a different plan for and we're gonna cover that in a future video. This is just kind of your everyday run of the mill moving back overhead that we're gonna have to get into position to hit. Now the biggest problems I see with this shot is number one, people freeze. They just don't move for it. They just tell their you know, uh, doubles partner to go get the ball or you know, they just concede defeat if they're playing singles and someone hits a lob over their head. That's the end of the point. And I don't want you to do that. I have full confidence that when you start doing the things that I'm gonna share with you in this video, you're gonna not only be able to get into great position to hit this shot, but you're gonna be able to hit it with authority and end the point and be the hero for your doubles team. In fact, my wife is dealing with this right now. You know, she's about five foot one in heels. <laughs> so, you know, when the ball goes up in the air and we're playing doubles together, it's automatically my shot. So she's got the athleticism, she's got the quickness to hit this shot, and we're working on giving her the skills to be able to execute the ball first and then be able to move for the ball second. Anyway, as for backpedaling, this is by far the worst way that you could possibly move back for the ball. I mean, look at this. I look ridiculous in this, in this video. And the reason is we're, we're, first of all, we're off balance. We've got our weight going backwards. And any kind of trip or fall here could be catastrophic. You know, you could easily hit the, top, the back of your head. That's the last thing in the world I want you to do. Fortunately, there's a much, much better and safer way to move back for the ball. Now, kind of the first step, if we're going step by step through this, the first step is to get sideways. Okay, so a lot of people will move backwards, but they'll be facing the net. So by the time they get to the shot, they have no coil. They have no ability to rotate through the shot. So let's just take that out of the equation right off the bat and make sure that as the ball goes up in the air, as soon as you know it's an overhead, you're gonna start to turn sideways. You're gonna line your body up sideways so that when we get to the ball, you're gonna be able to rotate and uncork on this thing. Now, the second thing you wanna do is you wanna use one of the following two footwork patterns to get to the ball. Both of them are good. One is better than the other, okay? So the first is the side shuffle. And this is perfectly fine because you'll get to cover more ground than backpedaling. And you can see we have a good balance here. We're covering a lot of ground and we're not nearly in as much danger of falling. Number two, and this is the much better option, is use a crossover step. So here we've still got great balance, but this is a superior footwork pattern because your head is gonna remain much more still through the motion, like a cheetah tracking a gazelle. And it's not bobbing up and down like a bobblehead doll, which will make it much easier to track the ball. Now, if you watch football, think of this like you're a quarterback dropping back to throw. And that's exactly what I want you to do. Now, if you've never used one of these footwork patterns before, don't just go right into a match and try and execute them. What I want you to do is shadow the movement first without the ball, Okay, and just get a feel for moving this way because this is a new uh, process for you. In fact, this is exactly how I learned it when I was 16 as an overweight, shy 
kid trying to make the high school team, our coach knew that we were gonna have trouble with this shot. So he made us every day before practice do this without the ball and just to practice moving backwards with this crossover step. And lo and behold, I can now hit this shot without making a complete fool of myself. And you can do the same thing. Let me know in the comments which of these footwork patterns you're gonna try first. I'm curious to know. Okay, the third and final step of this is to get your body far enough behind the ball so that you can hit the ball with your weight going forward into the court. And the way I like to imagine this is imagine you're in the bottom of the ninth inning with one out and the tying run, you're playing center field, and the tying run is on third base. If you've ever watched this happen, what happens is the guy hits a fly ball to center field and then the center fielder actually parks about a foot or two or three behind the catching point, okay, behind the moment he intends to catch the ball. For you, this will be the hitting point, the contact point. And so what he can do is as he's catching the ball, he can move forward, as I move the camera, <laughs> he can move forward, kind of catch the ball and throw in one motion with his momentum going forward. And that's exactly what you want to do on this shot. Now, if you're wondering what to do after you get into position, I just shot a video last week that I'll link to in the description and after this video so you can hang around here and it'll take you through step by step how exactly to hit this shot efficiently, accurately, effectively, and any other good adjective that I can use to describe this shot, okay? So thanks for watching this video. If you found it helpful, do me a favor and click the like button down below and let me know in the comments which footwork pattern are you gonna use first. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss next week's lesson and leave any uh, suggestions that you have for future videos down in the comments below and I'll try my best to do those in the days and weeks ahead. All right, thanks again for watching this video and I'll see you soon. Bye.